Okay, our final section here with regards to conditional probability is what's going to be called the multiplication rule. What is called the multiplication rule? Okay. So here's the multiplication rule is it's what allows us to chain conditional probabilities together. So let's let, so if A and B are subsets, so they're events, then by definition, of conditional probability, we can write the probability of A and B as probability of B given A times probability of A. We saw this before. We used this in deriving the law of cases and the law of total probability, the law of subcase, the law of total probability, is that probability of A and B equals probability of B give, we, we can say, okay, in order for A and B to occur, then A has to occur. So what's the probability of A? But then we can say, okay, but then once I know that A occurs, what's the probability that B occurs? It has to be probability of B given A, right? I have to condition now on the assumption, okay? So this is related to the multiplication rule for counting that we saw in the very first lecture. And it's a probabilistic version of it. So now what about for three events? So for three events, call it ABC. What do we have? Well, we can we can we can do the same thing. So we can kind of we can bootstrap this. Probably of A intersect B intersect C. Well, let's treat a intersect B as the event, right? So we say, well, in order for that to happen, we need A intersect B to first happen. And then once we know that A intersect B happens, we have to ask, well, what's the chance that C happens conditional on A intersect B happening? Okay. But now we can just use what we had before to simplify probability of A intersect B, right? So we have C given A intersect B, and then A intersect B is B given A probability of A. So now we see how did this work? Well, A intersect B intersect C is A and B and C. And we can say, well, for that to happen, A has to first happen, okay? Then once A happens, B has to happen, but it has to happen given that A happens. So it's in light of A happening. And then once B and A happen, C has to happen, but it has to happen conditional on A and B happening. And so we have this chain where we're progressively increasing the condition to calculate the probability that the next incremental uh, event happens. So in general, that's what gives us the multiplication rule, which is for any events, A1, up through a n, the probability that they all happen, so the probability of their intersection is equal to the product of the conditional probabilities, the probability of AJ given the intersection from I equals one to J minus one of AI. And to be for definiteness, we set the intersection of I equals one to zero, right? So this in the case of the first, I equals one to zero is just taken to be the sample space. Okay. 
So um, this is the, the multiplication rule for conditional probability. So it's important that it's important to keep in mind that we cannot in general just multiply probabilities together. We have to multiply the appropriate conditional probabilities together. We can multiply probabilities together if the if the events are independent. As we saw up here, the definition of independence is given here. And we can so we can multiply probabilities together provided that the events are independent. Otherwise, we have to um, use the definition here. I mean, this is actually the definition of, you know, this is using the definition of conditional probability. And something to realize is, and this can be shown, so this would be an exercise, right? Which is A and B are independent. If and only if probability B given A is equal to probability of B given A complement is equal to the probability of B. Similarly, probability of A given B equals probability of A given A given B complement equals probability of A. So that's not how we defined independence, but that could have been how we defined independence. And we see that if that's the case, in the case of independence, if probably a B given A equals a probability of B, then this becomes probably a B and we get pro pro probably a B times probably of A. That's, that's where we get that product rule for independent probabilities. But in general, this is the more general formula. This is the one we need to use uh, in, the, in the absence of independence.